So essentially we're probably here at least another couple hours, which is completely screwing up our window. That was quite the eventful morning. Sailing and being in liveaboard is such an intense relationship with me. Not exactly in the direction we want to go, but at least we're moving. Yeah, the wind died. We kind of just dropped anchor wherever we happened to be. We decided to see the world by sailboat. We sailed from the Great Lakes of Canada and made it to the Bahamas where the unexpected happened. We're not able to start the engine. Let's go! And this is where we gotta go in. <laughs> well, the stop is on the wrong side. Go, go outside for a second. Hey, yeah, get, no, go. yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're fucked. The stop on the other side there, you can kind of see it, got a little bit of red on it. It's supposed to be in between these two plates, and it's on the opposite side, which means we are oversteered to one side, and I'm gonna have to dismantle stuff to get at it. So essentially we're probably here at least another couple hours, which is completely screwing up our window. Days like this you really wonder if it's just not multiple signs trying to tell you that you shouldn't leave today. Because we've had so many things go wrong this morning. Between having to wait quite a bit late to get some more water, to having the halyard spin around the whole flagpole and backstay, to now this steering issue and just the dinghy story was super hard and to be honest i'm not even sure if we can actually pull anchor in this kind of condition i mean we've done it in the past in andros but it was a two-man job and it probably took us like a half hour to an hour just to finally pull the anchor off <sighs> so i don't know so um since our little wheel here is not really doing anything productive I've got to tie it off to the cleat here, all the way over to port, and hopefully that will give us enough room to unscrew the bracket a little bit, and then run it back to uh, in between, or run the steering in between the two brackets like it's supposed to be. And this is just really terrible timing for this to happen. So I'm so frustrated because you're just like moving around. I've never, we've actually not bucked this much in, since Andros, and it might even be worse than Andros right now. The advantage of being tiny, I get to go in holes. This one. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make just enough space for you to get in. So just loosen off the screws maybe like that much. That might give us enough room with you pulling it, keeping your fingers away from the stop, and I'll turn it back in between the stops. And you're talking about the two screws at the top? Yeah, there's three actually. Oh, okay. At least three. I might have put an extra one in there. Alright, we are coming. Do you need a different screwdriver or are you okay? I can probably just get it like this. Alex is removing the screws to give us room to be able to turn the to be able to turn the thing. And as you can see, one of the screws is bent. I'm gonna have to try to straighten it since we don't have screws this thick. I guess in hindsight it was better that this happened now than while we were sailing, but I'm pretty sure it only happened because of the wake and the way the wheel was turning. So from now on, I'm gonna lash it like that every time. Hold on, hold on. Hey, right. it's gently try to do it. You're halfway there. Oh, stop, stop, stop. All right, can you go back? Yeah, you kind of pulled the whole thing. All right, hard over to one side. Stopper. Hard over the other side. That's the stop. Good job. You ready? I'm kind of stressed. I hate this moment. 
when there's lots of waves, then it's just, oof. Yeah, I, I know. don't like it. I'm not super keen on it today either. Actually not too bad. I can hold it pretty easily in the waves, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. Okay, there's a big wave coming. Leave it slack. Slack again. Just gotta be ready for each wave to let some out. Get the brake ready. You got it? Yeah. Exhausted. Pull it, yeah. All right, we're at our last 20 feet. We got the snubber on so that we don't bust up our bow roller. And we're just waiting for the swell to pull the anchor out. We're making sure we're not drifting. And I'm hoping we're gonna be able to pull the anchor out just with the weight of the boat right now. I've never seen it set so strong, which, you know, is normally a really good thing but not when you're trying to pull it out with no engine. We normally hand overhand the chain to get it to about double, you know, two to one scope or so. Just the bumping around or the, the swell actually will pull the, the anchor out of the, the sand. But this time we were at roughly two to one, maybe a little bit more, maybe that was part of our problem. It just wasn't working. Actually, we were dragging anchor, but we weren't pulling it out of the sand. It was just dragging it through the sand. That was probably the least fun pulling up a banker that we've ever had. Our cleat in the front is really big, so the chain break idea that we've been trying to do doesn't really work. It, I mean, it slows it down, but it just, it slips. And then, uh, so we tried using the snubber. And so I would pull in a little bit, hold it there just long enough for Alex to clip on the snubber. And that seemed to do the trick. All right, we're up. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have steerage? Yep. All right, let go of your end. Well, do your tack first, do your tack. Have enough speed? One point one. Fall off, fall off. It's okay. Fall off. Yeah, we're good. Good job. All right, you're going to the other side? Uh, 
turn into the wind when you get fur farther away from shore. Yeah, into the wind that way. I get so much into the wind. Well, when you get further away from shore, you you judge though by your depths as well. Give you yourself a pretty wide tack angle. Turn up into it. Right now you're you're way off. <laughs> you don't need to go across the, the, the tack. Tell me when. was quite the eventful morning. We just left Black Point. We're actually just passing Harvey Key. Yeah, that's right, Harvey Key. On our way to Highborn Key. And unfortunately, we're only cruising at like an average of 3.3 knots. Uh, right now, 4.7, so we get up there, but our whole process of pulling up anchor and then having to jibe around because we were going too close to shore and just our general leaving the anchorage was quite slow, so it's brought our average down quite a bit. Uh, we have a double reef in the main and a full head sail out. The wind's supposed to be coming out of the west. It's probably coming out of west, northwest or so. And um, I mean, we're trying to head northwest. So it makes it pretty difficult. We're hard on the wind and we know we're gonna be like this for at least another 10 hours, maybe longer. So we're going to be arriving at High Highborn in the middle of the night, which we already knew was going to happen because we had to wait till 10 o'clock to get water. I made some homemade bread sandwich with some cheese, tomatoes, and my little sprouts. And that bread is so awesome. It's actually the recipe from my friend Teresa from our buddy boat. That's no longer with us. But it's so good. It was so hard doing that down below though. There's a lot of... Um, it's in the wrong angle. We're on the wrong tack for cooking. And you make it... You said you, you only make it in a pan, so you don't even need an oven, which is really cool for bread anyway. We're gonna shake out a reef, uh, actually both our reefs. This is not the reef. Hey, you can pull. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Okay, oh, yeah, it should be good. Good, I think. Yeah. Good job. 
All right, tacking. sails turned into a very slow and relaxing sail. We are now having trouble even carrying four knots, let alone five. But I guess I can't complain because the waves are, you know, mellowed out and we're able to just kind of relax and enjoy the sail. I'm just hoping, crossing my fingers, that the lightning of the wind isn't happening too soon and then switching to north because that's where we have to go and I'm hoping to make it to Highborn K. If we don't, I guess it's not a huge deal. We'll just end up having a bigger day tomorrow. But already tomorrow is looking like it's gonna be, you know, a 22 to 24 hour period. So it just makes for a really long sail. But anyway, it's been pretty nice. Just chilling out, getting some rest, and uh, wait until we arrive. I find that sailing and being a liveaboard is such an intense relationship with me because it makes me cry, it makes me laugh and then other days it's just it makes me yell like this morning and then next thing you know it's just you're at peace and this beautiful environment. We left Canada about seven months ago now and I've lived through so many intense emotions and ups and downs and a bit of everything but just knowing that we're gonna have the sun setting on the tongue of the ocean makes me really excited. I just love watching those sunrise and sunsets on the water. I do prefer sunrise on the water because you know the sun's rising and you're gonna, you're gonna have some light and sunset means a bit of darkness. It's all part of it, eh? Well, the wind is starting to change a little more out of the north, right as it was predicted, basically. So we actually slowly was, we were drifting a little closer to shore and we had to tack around a sandbank, which is kind of annoying because as soon as we would have made it around that sandbank, we would have been able to turn more north and the northwest wind would have been a little better, but now the wind's out of the north, so we're gonna be Feeding into it for a while, I'd say. But at least we're back up to speed here. We were going like two knots trying to cut around that bank and it just wasn't worth doing. I sh we should have just tacked earlier because now we're actually cruising double the speed. Not exactly in the direction we want to go, but at least we're moving. Well, at least we had a beautiful sunset though. Can't complain about that. It's always nice having a sunset while you're cruising. And uh, we didn't see the green flash though. It kind of sucked, but you know, you can't win them all, I guess. How's it going there? Mm. Surviving. Trying to look at the stars. And, um, yeah, the wind died. So, we kind of just dropped anchor wherever we happened to be, which was fairly far from where we wanted to be. And actually, I think it's maybe calming down a little bit, but 
um, because the wind was completely dead and there's still swell. It was quite uncomfortable when we first got here. And I guess I'm just a little bummed out. There's been a lot of negative stuff going on today. And things not going as planned and, and I guess welcome to cruising. So Corey says that I'm kind of putting on a show and not really sharing with you how I felt about today. The reality is that when you're doing those things with someone else, one of you has to be the one that tries to cheer, to cheer up the other one when someone's down. So we've been taking turns being the one that's stronger and helping the other one out. But really, I'm having a lot of trouble today, actually. It's been one of those kind of rough day, mentally exhausting between trying to fix some problems and just things that really lining up. And so you try to see the good stuff that happens. I'm tired and the boat's kind of bouncing around and our bed sheets are wet because, well, we've been bashing into the waves and our anchor locker is not the most waterproof thing up until we like we fiberglass the whole thing, which is gonna have to wait until we get more epoxy. So anyways, hopefully tomorrow's gonna be a better day. It's gotta be. And a good note though, that there's quite a bit there of shooting stars. I've seen three so far. And maybe I'll try to look for some more. Make some good wishes so that tomorrow is a nice new fresh day really. I think that's what we need. And a good night of rest. It's always going to be interesting waking up in a, an anchorage that you didn't see the night before. I cannot see land at all. I gotta drive because Jittery Jackson doesn't know how to drive with swell. So we put two reefs in before the night and it's easy. We are really not where we expect it to be. We wanted to thank our newest patron, John Davidson. Thank you so much for the support. 